Welcome grade 10s to this lesson on doing basic probability calculations. Let's join one of our presenters, Natasha, as she discusses main probability terms and goes through basic probability problems. A probability is really just a likelihood or a chance of an event or something happening. And we measure this on a scale from 0 to 1, which I will get into a little bit detail in a little while. First, let's just go over what an event is. Now, you will see this phrase often being used when we deal with probability. An event is just a collection of one or more outcomes of an experiment. So it's really just re-looking at all the outcomes of an experiment and listing down these, uh, these outcomes as events. Now, if we are absolutely certain that an event will take place, then the probability is 1. And if, we, if it's absolutely impossible that something will happen, then the probability is naught. And that brings us to the probability scale. Let's just show you what a probability scale is. Now, remember, I said that probabilities are measured on a scale from 0 to 1. So if I represent this on um, an actual number line type scale, with 0 being the start, and then the probability of 1 being an absolute certainty, and then somewhere in between, which we'll say is about halfway, 50%, that's giving you a 50-50 chance of something happening. So naught, it's where it's an impossible in event. So that's absolutely impossible that something's going to happen. And here I'm talking about something like getting a seven on a dice. Now you know it's not possible to get a seven on a dice because your dice only has up to number six. So it's impossible that that will happen. And then a certain event is something like the sun rising every day. We know it's definitely going to rise in the east, so it's definitely a certain event. That probability would be 1, or 100% if we think of it in percentage terms. And 50, a 50% 50 probability, or 0, 0,5 probability, means there's an even or a fair chance or a 50-50 chance that something's going to happen. And here, if you think about if you toss a coin, your probability is you can either get a heads or a tails. So that's a 50-50 chance that you could get a heads or a 50-50 chance that you could get a tail. All right, and this is generally, everything falls in between here. As I said, all the different possibilities falls in between 0 and 1 on your probability scale. Probabilities, as I was mentioning during um, showing you the scale. Probabilities can be expressed as percentages. They can also be expressed as fractions. And these can all be used interchangeably. So I can talk of a probability as a fraction, percentage, or a ratio. The probability of any event happening is the number of ways of that event E happening all divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So if you take the number of ways that something can happen divided by the total possible outcomes, that will give you the probability of that event happening. So guys, what we'll do is let's use this in application, working out our probability. This is example one. And this is an application of finding the probability of an event E. So we are told that a fair die is thrown, and then they ask us what is the probability of getting a six. A fair die is just a fair dice. So you have a dice, you throw it, what is the probability of getting a six? Now remember, in order to work out the probability of any event, it's going to be the number of ways that that event can happen all over the number of possible outcomes. All right, so the first thing we're going to do before we determine the probability of getting a six is we are going to list all possible outcomes. So when you throw a dice, what are all the different numbers you could get from the dice? So what are all the possible outcomes? Now you know there are six sides to a dice, each of them having a certain number of colored dots. So if you throw a dice, you basically 
could get any of those numbers coming up. You don't really know what number is going to come up. So all the possible outcomes, you could get a 1, a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So it's basically any side or any face of that dice can be shown. You're not sure which one is going to come up. You can't tell for a fact, and that's why it's called a chance or a probability. So those are all the different possible outcomes. Now, the only successful outcome, or the one we are interested in, is getting a 6. So the only way we can get a 6, really, is if we throw a 6. So there's only one way in which that can happen. And there are six possible outcomes that could happen. All right, so we've got six numbers that could come up. The only time we will be successful in this experiment is when we get a six on this dice. So if I would like to work out the probability of getting a six, and this is how we express probabilities, I'm going to say the probability of getting a six on the dice is going to be equal to the number of ways that we can get a six, which is just one way divided by the total number of possible outcomes, which is 6. So therefore, the probability of getting 6 on a die is equal to 1 sixth. Or you could represent this as a, uh, as a um, percentage, as I said to you before. OK, the next part says, what is the probability of not getting a 6? So once again, let's work it out in exactly the same way. We know that the probability of getting a 6 is 1 sixth. So what is the probability that some other number is going to come up? So you throw your dice, you really want a 6, but what is the probability that you're going to get some other form, other number? So 2, 3, 5, anything else besides 6. So we do it exactly the same way. We list all our possible outcomes, and because we've just worked it out, I'm not going to do it again, but we've just shown that the possible outcomes are six. There are six different things that could come up, the one, the two, the three, four, five, or six. And we are looking at the probability of not getting a six. So the number of ways of not getting a 6, of not 6, well, that would happen if we got a 1, because 1 is not 6, obviously, or if we get a 2, or a 3, or a 4, or a 5. So in other words, not getting a 6 means getting all the other numbers on the dice. And the number of ways that can happen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ways in which we cannot get 6 on the dice. So therefore, the probability of not getting the 6 is going to be the number of ways in which we cannot get a 6, which is 5, all over the total number of possible outcomes, which is 6. Therefore, the probability of not getting a 6 is equal to 5 over 6. Now, what we call this probability, the probability of not getting something, we call that a complement. So if I want to work out the probability of not getting a 6, which is the complement of getting a 6, what I could have done is I could have said the probability of not getting a 6 will be equal to 1 minus the probability of getting a 6. And we know that the probability of getting a 6 we worked out was 1 sixth. So the complement of that would be 1 minus 1 over 6, which is, once again, 5 over 6. And as I said, you can leave that as a fraction. So this was just a different way. This is in think, uh, thinking of this question in terms of complements. So we can leave the answer in a fraction, or we can change it to decimal form. All right, let's do part C. Now we want to know what is the probability of throwing this dice and getting 4 or more. So first, let's list all the possible ways, or the number of ways, possible ways of getting four or more. So that would happen. We want to get four or more than four. That would happen if we got a four on the dice. So if you throw the dice, you get a four, then you're successful. Or if you get a 5, because 5 is more than 4, 
or if we get a 6. So there are three different ways we can get more than 4 on a dice. So the number of possible ways of getting more than 4, of 4 or more, is three ways. Okay, so that would happen if we got a 4, a 5, or a 6. We know that the total possible outcomes, total outcomes, since we're dealing with a dice, is equal to 6. Therefore, so this was the number of possible ways of getting four more. Now this was the number of total outcomes, which is six. Therefore, the probability of getting four or more will be equal to the number of ways of getting that, which is three, divided by the total outcomes or the total possible numbers that you could throw in this dice, which is 6. And 3 over 6 we know is a half, or we can say that's 50%, or we can leave it as a fraction, whatever you prefer, but generally we, re we can refer to probabilities as fractions, percentages, or ratios, as I said to you in the beginning. Natasha talked briefly about probability being represented as a fraction, a decimal, and a percentage. Before we go any further, let's revise how to change between the three. Let's start with the fraction 8 over 20. To change this to a decimal, we divide 8 by 20 and get an answer of 0, 0,4. We have just converted a fraction to a decimal. To change a fraction to a percentage, we always need to change it to a decimal first, then to a percentage. I will show you what I mean. In the previous example, we changed 8 over 20 to the decimal 0, 0,4. Let's change that to a percentage by multiplying by 100. We get an answer of 40. This means that 8 over 20 is equal to 40%. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the task for this section in the Probability Task video. You will also be able to learn more about probability on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.